I think we'll get started uh, with today's session. Uh, so to everyone present here, a warm welcome to another session of Curtain's Dubai Speaker Series. I'm Lanita, I'm the Head of Marketing and Student Outreach here at Curtain Dubai, and it is my pleasure to be hosting today's episode with our guest, Atir Nirmalji Bhagarani. So to introduce everyone uh, and to give more about our guest today, Mr. Ratin Nirmal is an incredibly respected member in the expat community in the United Arab Emirates. While being the managing director of Yogi Group, a conglomerate of construction, civil works, and real estate businesses, he has gained industry-wide recognition as a serial entrepreneur. For the prodigy he is, Forbes magazine featured him as the in leading industrialist. And today, he will be speaking about running a business in uncharted territories, retaining one's passion, pushing through with resilience and maintaining a work-life balance. So I hope today's session will be a beneficial one, not just for the students, but all the other members joining us today. On behalf of everyone present here, thank you for joining us, Mr. Ratan Nirmal, and I look forward to having a fun and knowledgeable conversation with you today. Thank you, Lanita, thank you. Looking forward, I mean, I, mean, I, mean, I love the whole idea of, uh, being here, being there for, I mean, obviously the university and uh, all the other students and people attending. So yeah, amazing. Thanks for having me. It's our pleasure. Before we get started with the discussion, I'd just like to quickly announce the housekeeping for all, all our participants present here. We will be going through a series of questions that are curated and put together by the students who have understood the background of Mr. Atanirmal. However, if you feel that we haven't covered all your questions, you will always have the provision to drop your queries on the Q&A box available on the uh, screen, if not on the chat box. We will ensure that towards the end of the session, all your live questions will be answered too. So without further ado, here's Mr. Ratan Nirmal for you. So shall we get started with the first question? Yes, let's go. Let's have some fun. <laughs> yes, let's do. So we sent, as I mentioned previously, we did send out a few uh, a survey to understand what is it that our students are looking forward to understand and learn from you. And the most commonly asked questions uh, included, what does a day in the life of Atinirmal Pagarani look like? Uh, would you please walk us through? A day in my life? Yes. It is blissful for sure. <laughs> it is super, super blissful. Uh, I'm, so I, I mean, I have this thing I follow. I mean, I'm sure everyone's heard of it. It's called the 5 a.m. club. Mm -hmm. You either wake up at 5 a.m. and just start hustling or hustle until 5 a.m. and go to sleep. And uh, I mean, I love my normal sleep, so I wake up at five. And uh, usually for me is, there's something which I read a long time back is you need to start disciplining. I mean, you know, following, following a pattern from the very beginning. So as I wake up, if I would literally do my own, like I would fold and put my own sheets together so that those, those first couple of minutes are uh, trying to, you know, it's like a discipline I follow because my, my brain wave is like, okay, I need to fold this in this particular manner. And yeah. as everyone knows, health is wealth, and I love my workouts. I'm not a big, I'm not into, I'm not big into sports. So and for me, my sport is you know going heading to the gym, be it weight training or cardio or anything. So for me, it's get get that out of the way in the early in the morning where there is no one trying to call you, there is no emails to reply, there no there's no messages coming through, or you know you know no one from the family trying to call you and telling you like you know be here, be there. So yeah, get out of the way in the morning, and then. Just back home, quick breakfast, and then hustle through, hustle through the day and uh, get through all the meetings, which 90% which are planned, and then whatever comes off guard comes. And then, yeah, and then back to the family in time and uh, spend enough time with the family. I mean, I love my family. I think that's the reason, that's one of the biggest reasons I would say my life is like blissful. And then, yeah, and after that, if there is any plans with friends or with family or anything, get that, get that done in the evening and Try to try to close early. Try to close early. I mean, I should be in La La Land. I want to be in La La Land by half ten. And if that okay. happens, then great. If that doesn't happen, then like I think people around me realize and they're like, "Can you at least go back home? Like, it's, there's no use you're around because you're not around." I'm like, "Yeah, let me just go back home because I need to start early again." Yeah. But it's, it's, I mean, it's it's an I mean, I think every day is good. Is this as long as like people dress in a manner because they want people. They want everyone else to see they're presentable. I think if you just dress with gratitude and get out and do what you got to do, it's amazing. So 
So that's I usually think, what the life is. I think that's a fantastic ideology. Uh, I, I absolutely love the way that she said we start the day with folding the bed sheets first. And that that kind of gets you a good kickstart. And if I'm not wrong, I did read about it where uh, there is a saying that the way you start your day, including the first thought that comes to your mind, can actually make an impact on the rest of the day. So uh, apart from that, the uh, systematic pr uh, process of making sure that you spend your time in the evening uh, back along with your family is a really good example of how we could be focusing on work-life balance. And I'm actually looking forward to learning more about how you go about it uh, as we progress. So uh, since you said uh, you spend a lot of time with your family, which is off work hours, understanding that you come from the background of a family business, it means families at your workplace too. So what role could you tell us? Uh, do you currently fill in the business and how do you manage your professional capacity and your responsibilities as a uh, stakeholder? And how do you go about differentiating it? Uh, let's see, family is, family is there at the workplace, but there's a very, uh, there's a very clear, uh, there's a very distinct, there's, there's a line where, the family doesn't cross when it comes to professional because when you're sitting in a meeting, we, we all are responsible. It's not that it's, my, it's, 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 a, it's a parent or a sibling who's sitting and we're like, obviously we are, we are uh, I mean, the personal bit is there. Example, obviously if you're having lunch in the office, you're like, oh, do you wanna, do you wanna have that? But when, when it's in a meeting, when it's work, we are just purely at work. There's a very clear difference between family and uh, when family at work and family at home. Mm -hmm. And as for coming into responsibility, see, there is, by the grace of God, there is a, I mean, today I can say that there's a team, there's an amazing, beautiful team together to put Yogi Group where it is today. But I, although it's, maybe some people like saying that it's, you know, I have a team who works for me, but I just think, I think there's a team who works with me mm -hmm. because I think that's, I feel that. So I don't need to just say it because I feel it. I mean, if I'm, if it's me talking to, an accountant or for me talking to an engineer or me talking to be the office boy, be it, be it, an, be it an external auditor who comes to the office, be it anybody. So I just think we are all there for a common, common goal. That's what is something which I try to see in those employees as well before hiring them, where it's not, I know it's a nine to five for them, or uh, I mean, it's, it's a routine job, but I don't, I, I don't want them to come with a dissatisfied face. So it's more like working with the team. Okay. I mean, yeah, I mean, if someone says, what's your designation? I, would, I mean, I would say managing director, but then you have to do everything, right? I mean, especially when you're, when you're in business and you've got to do everything. I mean, that's what I believe. That's what I, believe. Um, I, I think I would completely agree to that as well, because here at Curtin, we, uh, as the backend team, uh, one of the things that we follow is no matter who is in need, be it a student, a faculty, or a team member, we always roll our sleeves up and be there for them. And that kind of a value actually uh, makes a quality impact on the kind of in a, in a ultimate goal and outcome that we're looking forward to. So really great to know that um, that's the kind of uh, value you have inculcated in your organization as well. Um, so if I have to move on from uh, the, in the previous question and just quickly ask, uh, understanding that you have that kind of a relationship maintained with your colleagues, how is it when it comes to your family and, you know, most specifically your father and other family members primarily involved? How do you go about, you know, there, there may be some kind of um, confusions or kind of barriers. How do you go about breaking them and making it as smooth as possible? Uh, yes, difference of opinion does happen a lot. Like for me, the way it's not, I don't think it's just the way I'm being brought up, but it's just the way I've seen my parents. For me, my parents, literally my parents are God for me. They're just, I mean, if someone had to say define parent, define God, I would just bring in my parents. And that I'm not just saying that because they brought me into the world and they made me what I am today on my personal thinking, my psychological thinking, my professional thinking. As in when it comes to the office, yes, there is a lot of difference. I still remember something as simple as, uh, like my dad's very, very simple till today, even after he, I mean, by the way, my dad actually started as a janitor. He started as a janitor. He used to clean Yamaha motorbikes. And by the grace of God today, he's a chairman of Yogi Group. And there are more than 1200 people who work under with him. I can say the work, work under him, you know, he's reached where he's reached and he's not, 
I mean, he's done that by himself. He's completely, the only thing he inherited from his parents was blessings. He didn't inherit a dirham. He did not get anything from insurance money. He's, he, she's shown us that how Yogi Group has become what it has become without borrowing. We have never, we have by the grace of God, never taken a loan, never taken a mortgage. We have, uh, it's all bootstrapped. It's all my own savings and, you know, reinvestments into the company. So when I, I, I saw my dad doing what he did, I'm still seeing what he does. There are minor differences which do come in. Like something, as a simple example, when, when I joined the group many years back and uh, the, a simple thing that, you know, dad, I think we should, you know, like Papa, we should have a website done up. And that time he's and he literally was like, what's website? Like, what is a website? And I'm like, dad, it's like, it's Papa, this is like a, what do you call it? Digital catalog. Like, mm -hmm. I, I don't know how to describe it to him. I had to describe it to him in his language, like what he could try to understand. And he, in his, you know, in, in our own, in, in our own mother tongue language, he's like, why should we do this? Why should people see what we are doing? By the, you know, we have never printed a catalog till today. It's all happened word of mouth. It's grown. Why should we, and why should people see what we are doing? What if they take it the other way? Yeah. And I was like, how am I going to explain this? Like, why am I trying to explain that? Why do I need a website? So those, those few things happen. And with time, obviously many, many other things keep happening, be it on uh, strategies, be it on insurances, be it on the, the, the way we should, the, the R&D we need to do before getting into something. So there's a different thought process at all times, but by the grace of God, it's always very smooth. It's always very like, you understand me, I understand you and try to get a midway. And we don't try to, be stuck with the word compromise because I don't think no one's compromising here. Everyone's happy to do what the family is happy with. And there are maybe very few places where someone has to put their foot down and then, but then we realize with time that I'm glad that foot was put down at that time. So yeah, I think that thing happens and similar with siblings as well. Everyone has a clear role. So no one really comes in each other's way, but mm -hmm. we, we have a common group. We discuss everything. We discuss this is what we are looking at. This is what we plan to do. We, we are very open to opinions. We are, uh, we accept opinions. We respect all of that. And because everyone's good in their own way. So yeah, but all coming down from Papa, I would say that's the way he's uh, very humble. Like that's something which is narrowed down in us. It's not, if, if, if you're, if you're, if I think if you're the amount of growth and your money and something, if it goes up, up your head, it can spoil things. So I think this being humble help, helps in the office as well. I mean, I guess, I don't know if I've really answered your question. I've jumped a little here and there. Yeah. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. You should definitely have answered the uh, questions that I've asked so far. And it really warms my heart to, uh, you know, we've already heard about uh, Mr. Fagarani before and to hear it from his own son again as to how uh, the humble beginnings has led to where he is now is really heartwarming. So we surely look forward to looking at him as uh, one of the idle persons to learn from. Um, Actually, sorry, I'm going to cut you in this. I mean, I, I remember there was a time when my papa used to be like, stop being on the phone, stop being on the laptop. Like, why are you all day on it? <laughs> now, the more I am, the more, uh, I mean, the more I'm on the screen, the more he hears touching, touching, like, okay, you know, the money's coming in. He's like, go, go be on the screen, do whatever. Just make sure the money's coming in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you know, this is the way things move, I think, with time. Okay, that's that's amazing. Uh, I think, like you said, over time the progress absolutely happens. Um, so, how do you actually go about managing your family life, your work, and your passions? How do you go about balancing that bit? It's, it's easy. So I don't know how to like how to explain easy, right? Uh, it's simple for me. For me, I mean, health is important. Health, for, for me, I think, I think life in general is passion. So whatever comes in my life, be it health, be it wealth, be it work, be it family, it's very, uh, it gets managed easily. I, mean, I don't know how to explain easy. <laughs> good, good question. But yeah, I mean, get my health, health done up in the morning, as I said. Uh, I think for me, I feel my, I really love my work. So I think passion comes in there. Like I do not come to the office and I'm like, oh my God, today this has to happen. Or oh, that has to happen. Oh my God, this client's a pain. I don't, it doesn't happen. I think for me, my work is passion as well. And then thank God I get enough time for family. I used to get a little less time because I do travel out of Dubai 
once a month because we have a factory in uh, Mumbai and that's what used to take me there once a month. I have clearly not even gone to Dera in the last one year. So, so yeah, that, that actually <laughs> took me, you know, it, it did give me very less time with family. Like it's given me more time now. I used to get a little less time once in a, once in a month. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, and passion for me is like, I'm, I'm a foodie, so I enjoy like going and trying new restaurants and uh, doing all of that. I'm not, I'm not a party animal. I don't drink, I don't smoke. I cannot sit with a group of people and small talk. If they're not letting me grow, they are definitely going. You know, it's, it's like a clear strategy. They don't let they don't let you grow. They got to go. So, I think it's just yeah. I mean, and once once you very very you know when you're content in life, you don't need to you don't try to like look around that what's going to try to satisfy me. You got to you got to make sure you're you're taking care of like you do you like you need to be very very uh, you need to be focused on you and you should try to enjoy what you're doing. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time. I have a lot of friends, a lot of colleagues, a lot of people who I know who maybe much older to me, way more mature, but whenever I meet them, either they're depressed, either they're looking for external factors to keep them happy. I mean, again, I don't want to look down on something. I'm like, okay, I'm like, oh, you know what? Let me just be thankful for myself and then let's go from there. So I think, I think that automatically balances things. I mean, random meetings do come up where I'm, if I've committed somewhere and if I'm going to be with my family for a, for a fun, fun event and I cannot make it because the work thing has come up, I think my family knows that they understand it they don't really by the grace of god be it my siblings or parents my my wife my kids they don't they understand what what's happening so it's not on purpose and it doesn't happen very often thank god so yeah the balance it, it balances somehow <laughs> okay um so keeping that in mind did you always know that you wanted to be a part of a family business i did not know that when i was in school i kind of felt that when I was in uni, yes, there is an expectation where my uh, family did expect, they had that expectation that, you know, that, oh, now our son's going to come back. My elder brother, who's like a second father to me because he's 12, he's 12 years older to me. So he and Papa and in general, they were like, they had that expectation that he's going to come and he's going to do something because he's the only kid who's left uh, UAE. He's gone abroad. He studied, he's done his undergrad, he's done his master's. And so they had that expectation, but I just feel God just, God just played, played very well. He just literally moved my focus towards what my family business was and is. So I did not ever worry. I know I knew my, my, my friends and everyone else in university, they, they were worried that, oh my God, they're going to go back home and do a business which they do not enjoy. Be it, some, be it someone's family business in in insurance or someone's there was some there was a one colleague whose family business was to take care of thousand cows he's like i can't go back and take care of cows and uh, and i mean obviously it was a laugh then but end of the day it's more than a million dollar i mean it's almost close to a billion dollar industry what his father is running i don't want to bring out names but you know now he now he must he must be realizing that what he said then so i just feel people look at the industry look at something from the outside and don't get to know what's in the inside. So for me, by the grace of God, engineering and construction, manufacturing, real estate, it all, it kind of flew into my ears and brain when I was growing up and it just fell in, fell in place. So I was not really worried. I was, people called it that, you know, you're going with a golden spoon and everything is set for you and it's a business, but I just not feel it. And at the end of the day, I had to still prove myself, right? Be not to my family, but to myself. I, I think, uh... And uh, just to add to the last point, uh, my next question is just around that. Uh, you know, as you know, child of the family business, when you joined 10 years ago, when, when it was the time for you actually, uh, like you said, through yourself, what were some of the challenges that you faced uh, with others who aren't family? Uh, as in challenges are fa faced with the family or with the, with the, with the team? Uh, with the team that isn't family. Oh, which isn't family. Uh, I mean, challenges, what happens is when, when I, when I entered Yogi group, which is, I don't know, you know, 14, 15 years now, I, I, I had no, I had no cabin. I had no, I, I did not have an hour table. I was, I used to sit in the visitor's chair for a while and I would just, it was not that everything was ready for me. There was nothing, there was no platform ready. I had to go and start from scratch. I would. At that time, I would go every day to Ajman, 
in the morning to one of our factories and i would literally be on the factory floor try to understand things the challenges i would face with the staff was they i think somewhere inside them they they had that fear that oh we're going to have one more boss on our head and the biggest boss is busy because there are multiple businesses so he is not micromanaging but now that there is somebody more younger who has more time to look into our day to day activities so i think uh, it was they thought they could this not not for everybody like maybe a few of them they could they, they thought that oh my god we will have to tell him what's happening but i did not cross question them i used to observe they were a little uh, i would say a few of them were a little secretive in general because they were just either they were either fearing their job or i don't know what kind of kind of fear they had but i just i realized it very early that if you're a little friendly to your team not over friendly if you're a little friendly little easy with them and make it very fluid things is fall in place so i did not have any major challenges yes there were like maybe minor things there if i asked a question to one of the staff members to this kind of clarification they would like they would go to my father or go to my brother and say that i think normal is trying to ask us this and my family is like so what let him know right you know he needs to know they were just not comfortable that like he's really young why should we report to him or why should we update him so these but they were very trivial things it never really mattered i mean i wouldn't call it a challenge it was just i wouldn't even call it a learning curve i don't know what to learn out of it so it's just it, it I, i wouldn't call it really challenges there was not there was not much the markets moved up and up and down there were things how the economy and the industry moves i think that's i think that's a bigger challenge than team team can be managed you know you can i mean it's to the two people making noise just make sure how they can calm down so yeah okay uh, i i think you actually answered my next couple of questions around yeah. how it is to be in a family business and apart from just the challenges with the team members how is it that you push yourself to prove yourself so uh since uh the past 10 years the market has been you know good to us but unfortunately last year with covid happening there's been a drastic change in everything that's been happening and we are now getting used to the new normal including the virtual conversation we're having right now so in terms of your business how how did it adapt how did your business cope with covid and you've had to deal with different aspects of your staff the customers receivables cash flow and considering you have multiple businesses under your wing how did you actually keep your team motivated uh you know you know the golden word which we all must have we we know it's there in the dictionary we know we must have read through it in multiple books in the past you must have read but what we what we brought into practice was pivot so knowing what's happening in the industry by the grace of god 2020 is been one of our nicest years like it's uh, i mean i know it's i mean i i i i very happily say that god is god is great i know there were a lot of people who shut shop a lot of a lot of them complete like you know belly up but for us it did great from the very beginning we are the group in general is not only humble in their own thinking but what's important is keep show, making sure you you know you you you're cutting cost from the very beginning where you don't over leverage yourself you don't over staff yourself you don't over burden yourself you put on your plate what you can actually digest and uh, and the biggest plus point is being extremely old being extremely i would say old in the industry it's i mean the yogi group has been here for more than 45 years now so through time the group has seen ups and downs ups and downs and even even the last recession so called recession came in we guys were more than fine what happens is the smaller companies kind of vanish mm-hmm. and then people are like okay let's you know let's go back to this company because it's been there it's grounded and even if even if our prices may be a little bit more or different than someone else they know there is a reason behind it there is uh, for us again it's more about quality over quantity it's not you know we could we could have over 2 3 billion turn over, you know dollar turn over if you want it just by signing up anything and every everything and not giving quality but we didn't do that we were very simple uh, we were very humble in what we could take on on board for our team Yeah. See, we we had to we had to sit down and explain them. This is I had to explain them. This is what is happening in the market. So there was I I don't think I don't think we reduced staff. I think maybe just 
couple of them through the entire group. Like maybe I, I don't even re- remember removing or uh, you know laying off five people or the entire group. I, it's just end of the day, why should they suffer? You know, they are also here for a job. So, and if COVID hit somebody, it hit. It should have hit everyone. So we did that, like in property management, the properties we own or the properties we manage for people, we sat down with the landlords. I sat down with my own tenants. We happily gave them, you know, like months free. We happily, we residential, like, you know, people are like, my landlords are like, why do you want to give three months to the to residential tenants? Commercial understandable because the offices are closed. I was like a residential runs because the commercial is giving in something, right? So we need to be good to our residentials as well. A few landlords were very unhappy with us. Few of my friends are like, "Are you stupid? Like, why would you just not collect the rent for those, you know, those few months?" And knowing that business is already going down, I was like, "No, I'm. I mean, I'm like, if someone's taking a hit, everyone's taking a hit." So I'm very happy. I was very. We are. We all as a family were very happy to take that decision. The couple of months receiving zero rent did not matter at all to us. I, we knew that those thirty, sixty days, or somewhere we even gave it close to ninety days. I mean, those tenants must be sleeping so peacefully. Even either, the, even if they were, even if they were malicious and thinking towards us, end of the day, there was less load on them. Maybe they did not even lose their job. Maybe they did not do anything. I, w- I would just say that okay, it's, it's a gift of God that it's happened. So I think everyone took the hit in a way, but uh, it was calculated. Not really a worry. So COVID did not. COVID did very well for us. We 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 pivoted a little bit. Example: our construction industry. The there is already a decent amount of supply in the country. We were like, what do we do with the construction team? Because the number of projects coming in are not as much. So then we have a property maintenance team. Now to construct a building or to maintain a building, the the team is almost potato potato. So I'm like, we already have a maintenance team. Why don't we just magnify that bit? Why don't we increase the maintenance team? So your Emirates Contracting Company has a ch- as a baby baby called yogi fixes yogi fixes is a maintenance company you can call the company even to fix a bulb or to completely renovate or construct or construct or refurbish every we we, we cross beat cleaning we pest control all of it so i'm like why don't i just move the team there why do i get rid of my engineers i tell my engineers why don't you just move there and try to get more maintenance jobs everyone house everyone's houses have an issue everyone's offices have an issue every every villa or needs some painting work every swimming pool needs to be maintained so we magnified that. So by the grace of God, that really picked up. I mean, that alarmingly picked up. So we were very, very happy. I mean, I feel that we were the we were the only ones in 2020 who were still recruiting. I kept recruiting uh, tech, technicians, engineers, uh, painters, plumbers, all of that because we were we were understaffed. So 2020 did very well for us, even property management wise. The smaller real estate companies who disappeared. Landlords came to us. They're like, "This company has disappeared. Can you take care of our property?" And people are still investing in Dubai. I mean, Dubai, for for whatever reason, does amazing. Market going up or down. Dubai, Dubai shines. So yeah. Uh, so I think I wouldn't be wrong if I said the secret behind the success that you have been going through, especially, um, is. Uh, definitely through the kind of value you have provided, not just inculcated within the organization, but that that you have implemented on your customers yeah. and uh, the years of experience that has led to smart strategically replacing how you execute your services. Yeah, it's important. I mean, everyone messes up. I mean, even the biggest burger joint sometimes forgets to put a fries in a happy meal. So, but it's fine. <laughs> it happens. Yeah. Shit happens. <laughs> it, I mean, we all learn out of it, so I think that's the end goal, anyway. And yeah, obviously, you you have again. Sorry, I'm I'm adding to this. You have to go with changing times. You need you, you can't be stuck up to old things. Be it like example, maybe decades ago when I had to explain Papa about a website. Even now, we should not. We should what what's happening technology wise. We should keep up to it. If it's if it's not needed in your industry, don't force into it because everyone's doing it, and we should do it. If it's not for you, don't do it. But if it's for you, where it, where you think life can get a little easier, where it can help, just pick it up. Even if it's an investment, it could hurt now, but the fruits will show you later. Okay. Yeah, please, you keep up with it. I mean, I think technology cannot keep up with technology, but we should keep up with technology. 
True, true, very true. Um, so you did mention about the back end of how you went about, you know, surviving through COVID-19. But did you have a specific way of promoting uh, the services that you have? Is there a specific marketing strategy that you had in place to push your services? Uh, 2020, 2021, I think, I think digital marketing. It's the only thing we did. And again, maybe, maybe this, maybe I'm just repeating myself, but from the day the group started until maybe last year, until today also, we have not ever paid for a newspaper ad. We have not ever paid for a magazine. We have not ever paid for a radio ad. It's all been word of mouth. It's all been super duper organic. And uh, it's just, I think, word of mouth. And that's the way it's grown. Digital marketing was something we added on because it's just easier for it's easier to tap into because there are, there are lesser number of people who want to construct a building, but there are more number of people who want to fix a bulb in the building. So obviously to get into people's houses, screens, phones, digital marketing was the only paid marketing we have ever done in our life, which we started last year. So I think digital marketing is the only thing we have, we have added on in 2020, 2021, and it's done very well. And for me, it's very easy to appoint a team to do it, to put it together. But for me, I, I, I kind of like getting into the muck. So I took, I went during, during COVID time, I went on before actually COVID, uh, December 2019, for some funny reason, I'm like, I, I want to understand digital marketing. So I just took a, I took a leave from the office. I did not go there for nine days. There was a crash course happening for nine days uh, in one of the places in, uh, in Alcus. It was, a, it was a uni, which was in digital marketing. So I took, the, I took the course myself and I'm like, I need to understand it. Not that I'm going to sit in do the ads myself, not that I'm going to sit and draft the Google ad or whatever myself, but I needed to understand it. So I just feel what, if there's something you can do, better do it and then delegate it to a team because you can understand better. Like for me, even my education wise, when I did my, I'm in Warwick when I was doing my masters, it was masters in engineering business management. And now I have an engineer in my factory. I have an engineer on site, on construction sites, be it an engineer in my, on the production plant or be it an engineer on the maintenance, or there's an engineer in my forklift garage. All of them has an engineer. Just that by doing that course, I'm like an engineer can't take the mickey out of me. I can understand what he or she is saying. So I think sometimes getting into and learning it yourself is important, not because you're going to do the job, but just for you to understand it better. Okay, that's great. Uh, so if I have to move from there, uh, you did actually answer the next question the students had asked, which is, what is the commonly used strategy between uh, stakeholders and if how important social media is? And considering the fact that it has done good to your company in the last year, especially when things were done, um, I think that answered the questions for our students. Uh, the next question we have on the list is, in terms of planning cycles, what kind of periods does uh, your family business look at? Is it annual? Is it five-year plans? Or is it 10-year plans? Uh, I mean, target wise, we, we have annual targets and we try our best to, to, to stick with it or, you know, go past it. Five-year plans. I mean, that doesn't really come in the discussion. Ten-year plans doesn't really, doesn't come at all. And I, and thank God, most of our businesses are, I mean, nothing is seasonal. Nothing is seasonal. Everything is, I mean, properties were maintained. 100 years back, properties are going to be maintained 100 years from now. There will be paint. Your, your, your paint is going to chip 100 years back. Was, was getting chipped 100 years back. It's still going to happen from now. People are still going to construct. People are still going to uh, hire equipments. People are still going to main, you know, take care of their machinery. So nothing is seasonal. It's just that how do, we, how do we do better than the earlier year? How can we tap into more markets? And how can we like literally nail it, nail it in the city and do what you're doing? And, and a lot of like, for, for me, it's very important to repeat customers. Like if, if, I've, if I've got hundred customers, minimum 85 have to come back, minimum. Even if for me, even if 84 are coming back, something is going wrong. Okay. If 15 are not coming back, that's fine. I mean, maybe I'm, I mean, I'm not bored. I've, I've done something wrong, but at least 85 have to come back. So I okay. think that's very important. We try to see our, our repeat clients. Okay, so you do it on an annual basis and your primary strategy is to ensure you retain uh, the maximum percentage of customers. I would say 90% annual, maybe 
ten percent three years. Five years not really. I mean, it's like, I mean we'll cross the bridge when we get there. We'll see. I mean, if not, I mean we, we couldn't plan COVID, right? We couldn't plan anything. We couldn't plan recession. I mean, we, we took care. We we are still shining. We still yeah we are happy. So yeah, it's good. Amazing. So ad hoc plans have been in place still. Great. Um, so just to circle back to the uh, social media bit, uh, I to combine the two. Uh, how do you see your, How do you see the social media actually making an impact or uh, kind of difference it would make in the future for your businesses? Social media is already making difference. I mean, it's 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 been it's been helping us since a few years now. Be it, be it your simple. I mean, again, I would I would not say a few years because we invested into it. We are a part of it since a few years, but we invested into it by using the using the facilities of marketing. Maybe just in last eight to ten months, it's gonna it's it's helping me. It's helping me now. It's gonna help uh, help the group later as well. It's just how smartly you use it. Is this? It's like having a tool in your in your house. Is it how smartly you use your tool? Like. It could be something as simple as a knife. You can you chop something. It could be used in corners. Is it? Is this, I think it's a tool, but is this how smartly you use it? Okay. And if it's really needed, don't just use it because everyone's using it. If it's not for your in the industry, it's not for your industry. So, but if it's for your industry, I think it's how smartly you use it. We will obviously we keep using it. It's helping us a lot. Uh, mm-hmm. I would say influencer marketing helps us quite a bit. It mm-hmm. makes uh, I feel. Uh, that kind of marketing, which is for me, I just consider it a little cheaper mm-hmm. because end of the day, it's okay if I'm not getting paid by the influencer, but even if I'm doing the activity for an influencer, they have, they are, they are something in their little community, be it the community, be it their, their, uh, the fan following or be it, they could be, they, they could be amazing in maybe the lifestyle or food or wherever, but they have an audience. So if their audience are, say, for example, if I've done a free landscaping job for one of the influencers and they just, you know, they mention, they mention us and they do something saying that Yogi fixes, fix my garden or maintain my swimming pool. Now, it's a very simple job I've done for free for an influencer, but the, the ripple effect of it is, is beautiful. So, yeah. But again, you need to scan who you, you need to scan who you're doing it for. There are a lot of fake influencers out there. So, yeah. <laughs> Something to look out for, for sure. Um, I was actually told that you have a passion project uh, named Vesini. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. Uh, could you please share more about how you went about bringing it to life and what was your vision for it? How are you building it? And do you have any plans of expanding it uh, you know, geographically? You know, it's, it's, it's the, the story actually, I mean, it's a short story, but I'm gonna say it anyways. Uh, so one of the designers wanted to, one of the designers, I, I was on a, I was on a short break. I was on, on holiday in, I was in LA or Vegas, one of these cities and these really famous designers were there as well at that time. And they just told me that, Ati, we, we, you know, we got to know that you're in real estate and, uh, we want to open a flagship store in Dubai and that's what you're planning. I'm like, yeah, okay, come down, you know, like come down, I'll show you, I'll show you, I'll show you around. So they came to Dubai. I showed them around. I showed them the areas where fashion could be. And that time, primarily Indian designers were on Jumeirah Beach Road. Like Manish Malhotra had a store there. A couple of other designers had a store there at that time. So I was like, this is the street where everyone is. And I think let's just be here because everyone's there. It's, there I'm sure there's something out of it. So I showed, showed, showed it to them as a, as a property manager, or we would call it as a broker, or that was my intention to show it to them. They're like, Ati, why don't you partner? You know, why don't we partner? And I'm like, uh, for me, I'm like, dude, I can buy clothes. I can shop for my whole family. I can't sit and sell a sari or a lenga. You know, that's not, I mean, I don't know if I can do that. Then I know you can do that. You know, your, your passion for fashion. I'm like, yeah, I have a passion, but I don't know if I can sell those. Are, I mean, I can sell my other, anything with my industry because being, being a salesman is very important. I mean, if someone doesn't know how to sell, just go back home. Like, you know, you need to, you know, you need to know how to sell. So I was like, you know what, let me, let me train myself. So I actually kind of trained myself. I kept going to India. I went, went to their showroom, their factory, try to understand it. And then I was like, you know what, Kalas, let's do it. You know, and I am enjoying fashion. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's just start to do it. And that's when we started with one designer. And then we made it through the years. We made it into a multi-brand. We kept adding designers. And today, thank God, we work with over hundred names 
mostly mostly from india very few from pakistan and uh, so yeah we display them and uh, and the plus point was through the years the competitors started shutting down because it's a very difficult industry to it's not it's not easy to make money in this industry in dubai because firstly the margins are super thin yeah. secondly dubai is very close to be delhi or bombay or karachi or lahore it's literally couple of hours and you can go into those cities and yeah. shop and come back and somebody who wants to spend if someone's getting married their their billing is not going to be less than 10 20000 because they're they're spending on their garments their trousseau their relatives blah 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 and the add ons and the gifting they're like why do we spend all this in dubai if we can just fly down there shop there and come back and yeah. we obviously don't increase the prices if there's a designer abc who's selling something for 10000 rupees in india it's 10000 rupees in dubai in the aed currency plus 5% vat there is nothing there is nothing different so our prices are exactly the same but through through years people realized we i think our audience was like somebody who has an event in a week can't go to india something is overnight but then through the years people realized that okay you know we why do we even go to india because the headache is lesser in dubai and then pakistanis could get indian designers for me my indian, indian customers but pakistani designers for me in dubai so that's how it kept increasing we we try i mean we have got into the online space we are uh, selling through social media and i don't i mean i think i just want to be i'm happy with where i am i want to kill it in that one place where i am rather than i mean i better kill it by being with one one place rather than having four branches and thinning them out you know so yeah. don't thin just kill so that's the and it the product is such i'm not selling i'm not selling a basic white shirt and blue jeans where i can have 30 stores around the country you know it's a, it's a it's a niche market so yeah that's Yeah, but thank God it's been well. It's in in exactly fifteen days. I'm going. We're going to. Vasim is going to be touching eleven years. So yeah. Oh, congratulations! Uh, early congratulations on the anniversary. Uh, and I must say, the designs that you have put up on the Vasim uh, social media are absolutely a delight to look at. So. we can expect a few more stalkers to come and check it out um just to move on to the next question um given vasimi is a startup and you are also known for a series of startups that you have supported with what are the common challenges that um you face with we have students who will be specializing in uh, uh business uh, small business startups so uh, one of the things they would be doing once they're done with the course is either join their family business or if they have a brilliant idea at hand bringing it to life what is that what are the common challenges as a startup they have to look out for the most important i would say is keep a very be super humble especially in your expenditure on your expenses if you can work you know how they say a lot of like multi millionaires out there they like oh we started from a garage start from a garage you know be if you are starting from a common working place or if if there is some way wherever you can cut cost cut cost if you if something as simple as if you do not need the paper to be printed on a fresh paper printed on a waste paper if the papers ever needed if it not needed then don't don't even use the paper and i would say that i mean don't be complete miser i mean don't be like oh man i mean people are like oh, what kind of person is this you know it's, i mean you can't be that but just make sure your cost i'm just giving an example of a paper it could be rentals it could be your uh, whatever that other expenses you have and the city has expenses clearly so we have to just make sure that we you know we we keep it as low as possible in whatever way the other important thing which i think is equally important is have some know how in the industry like if somebody say say for example someone says i want to start up a restaurant i mean i know people who want to start up and start a restaurant and doesn't and don't even know how to put a sandwich together you can't like if you're getting into an industry have like not only r&d but know how like get there be in a kitchen talk to chefs be even if you have to work in a restaurant be an intern somewhere learn people this feel that oh i just have money and i can open a restaurant or oh, i have a passion i want to open a restaurant i mean there are people who have made it up there but i just feel if you if you know the industry well it's better like i i if someone's trying to say that i'm going to open the biggest hospital in the world and knows nothing about medicine or medical there are people who could have it must have happened but i just feel learning it having the know how that's very 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 important apart from the education what you guys are giving them i feel a little like getting into the field 
getting there, working somewhere, interning somewhere, and start starting small. I think expenses, cost, know-how, your resources, very, very important. If someone says that, you know what, I don't, maybe I can't be a chef because I'm not good at it, but I really want to open a restaurant. Then whoever you're appointing, make sure your resources, be it your sous chef or be it your, your head chef or be it whoever is in the part of that restaurant. I'm giving restaurant as an example here. I mean, it could be anything that, you know, that person is trustworthy or you have a very clear contract with that person. You have tasted, seen what the goals are of that person and then put things together. Because obviously if you're getting into it, you're not getting into it for fun. You want to scale it. So I just feel people don't do enough research and that's what, that's why they shut shop really quick and start small. I just feel start small. Just don't put all your horses on it. Just start small. There is nothing wrong with it. It's, it's, and it's a beautiful story. You know, you've made it big from starting small. So I think that's, uh, that's extremely important. Okay. Uh, I think that's a very valuable uh, thought. And along with it, it actually makes me proud to say that Curtin is uh, someone who believes in preparing the students before they actually get into the corporate world. So one of the two things, uh, one of the few things that we do for them includes giving them a mandatory internship experience with some of our uh, partners and um, well-known industries so that they are prepared before they get into the uh, industry itself as a, 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 an entrepreneur. And along with that also have various industry experts such as yourself to come and give them direct insight into what is it that they can expect. Uh, you, you, you guys are doing an amazing job. I mean, I mean, I mean, I'll just bring it right on your face. But when, when, if someone, any of the employers see there's a student with with curtain on the background, we know where they're coming from. So, like, uh, it absolutely yeah. makes me happy. You guys are doing a great job. Like, keep it up. I mean, it's it's a team effort, but you guys are. I'm not saying it because I'm here, but I'm being very honest. Thank you very much. It absolutely makes me happy and very proud to be a part of a team that's dedicated to making sure that students that walk out of the Curtin campus are walking with high quality uh, in terms of knowledge and uh, experience. So if we have a lot of students who are actually looking to start their ventures and you know, apart from the insight that you give uh, in, in terms of the challenge, what are the key attributes of an entrepreneur that they're required to possess? Attributes as an entrepreneur, do they have to, as in, sorry, your, your, your voice. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, just that again, sorry. Yeah, sure. So we have a lot of students who are looking to start their own ventures. So apart okay. from the challenge uh, that you just mentioned and how to go about it, what are the key attributes that an entrepreneur should possess if they have to start uh, with the company? Be humble. <laughs> Super mm -hmm. humble. Be, don't be in a hurry. Don't be in a hurry. I, again, this is that it's a common discussion which happens between consistency and intensity. You can, it's like an example, like a workout. You can have an, like an intense workout for 40 minutes for 40 days, or you can have a consistent workout for 40 months. Yeah. I mean, clearly you, we all know what's, where the results are going to be. So I think this be consistent. Don't don't give up really quick. Don't give up really quick. There is, if something has happened, it's happened because of your will. If something has not happened, it's happened because of God's will. So if it's not happening, halas, it's not happening. It's okay. Don't give up as well, but keep trying. I think I just feel keep trying. I'm, 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 not, I'm not mixing academics here because that's where you guys are best at. I'm just saying attributes when you're as an entrepreneur is be very selective on your team. You know, like, don't, I mean, uh, I mean, maybe it sounds wrong for me saying it here, but hire slow, fire quick. So mm -hmm. when you're hiring people, if they're a part of your team, you think there is a goal where they can bring it together. So if you're hiring anyone, when they want to start their own business, be very slow at it, do enough research, meet them a couple of times. And if it's not working out, you have given chances, you have given the platform to an employee or a team member. If they're not, just fire them because I'm not saying in a negative way. It's just you're wasting your own time. You're wasting that person's time because the person's not important. That person's not enjoying the, their job. They're just doing what they're doing because maybe they just want to get paid. And there are lots of them. Like, I'm like, if 
I mean, there are lots of attributes. I don't know how to like out of experience, personal experience. I would not, I would not encourage anyone getting into a partnership. I would tell them to start solo. Yeah. There are friends who want to do things together. Do them, but then be very. I mean, I'm telling you from now. I'm sorry if any of the students are hearing this and they're like, "Oh, we are planning to start a business with a friend." Do it, hands down. In few, few in a few years, you guys are going to go your own ways. I'm not saying that because I'm negative. Is this? what you can control for yourself what you can scale for yourself your partner could your partner will but it's not as easy it's not as easy this is not me alone i know maybe i can i can put on more than hundreds of people who i know who have gotten into partnerships and are no more uh, together few of them mutually are happy in their own industries few of them have fallen fallen apart very very badly So if if you know it's a project which you're getting together and projects being a partner is great, I'm sure you ex you you teach uh, team building in your university as well when you put the students as groups. It's very important to do that. So don't I mean I hope no one takes this negatively, but I think when you're getting into business, realize that someday, somewhere, either you have clear job profiles where you don't get head to head if you're management, or realize that oh this is for some time and. and later we are going to you know go by ourselves i think it's a, it's really it's a really important attribute because it doesn't i think it's more than an attribute i think it's a strategy where uh, it does if you if you if you're thinking of long like if you're trying going long if it's a short term thing then yeah khalas i mean there's a lot of collaborations we also do a lot of partnerships we have got into it but we know it's for a limited number of months or weeks or years not going long it's not like a four five year plus year thing because maybe your partner's goals are not as, as such or maybe you Took a step back, and then your partner is taking advantage of that. So just be extremely careful if if there is no other way but to get get a partnership. Then yeah, I mean, if someone saying I don't have money, I need a partner to put money. I have expertise. Okay, call us if that's what it is. That's what it is. But this is in time. You know, with time, both of them need to realize that this expert is going to become rich someday, and that rich guy is going to become an expert someday. Yeah, you know, working together. So I think once they know that, then yeah, I think and I think uh, yeah, just be take it easy, be humble. patient don't be in a hurry like it's i mean we all have heard rome wasn't built in a day so yeah this don't be in a hurry take it easy you we'll, you'll get there just just keep hustling don't stop okay thank you for that uh i just have couple more questions here coming your way uh if you had to give oh, one more <laughs> Um, I'll I'll leave the space to the. Uh, I'm bored. I want to hear. I want to hear the chat engine that I'm bored and we are just stuck here because we are a student of God. Like, <laughs> no, I'm I'm sure they are getting just as much as uh, of an insightful uh, session as I am. Um, if you had to give the 18 year old at the Nirmal a piece of advice, what would you uh, go back and tell yourself? Oh, don't partner. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah, don't partner. I. Uh, similar things for me. I feel somewhere I wasn't consistent, but with time I realized to be consistent. Uh, through personal and professional life, I realized that once you once you uh, see the plus point in everything, be it be it in a human, be it in a strategy, be it in a technique. Don't try to like get negatives out. I mean, don't be a critic. you know i mean don't you can be a critic to it because obviously you need to uh, you need you need the feasibility you need, you need to put the pluses and minuses you need, you need to know the pros and cons but don't make it your character be it in the office or be it at home or be it socially somewhere uh these those are few places where someone tries to get emotional when they are at work that must have happened a few times with me in the past and i think that was Now, I mean, I would tell that Athena Nirmal that you know what there are going to be times in life where the emotions are going to be coming your way when you're trying to take a decision. Don't let, let that not happen. Be 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 very clear and have a very uh, clear understanding. Like example, like for example, like 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 what well, like when the Hindus go to the temple when they're entering a temple, their shoes are outside, right? So when you're when you're trying to get into a place, either be it at work. You're getting into work. Leave home back. You're getting at home. Leave work back. It doesn't happen so easily when you're in a family business because uh, you know your work is on. I don't know how to say that today. It's work from home, so I don't even know how do you leave the shoes outside because <laughs> you're sitting on you're sitting on meetings. But I mean, I'm sure you get the point. 
yeah. and don't don't mix those kind of things so those were those, those were like a like a messy thing messy few things which i i had done so yeah i think these simple advices i mean and then i just think people will learn through life like i'm mm-hmm. like oh, i'm no i'm no guru i just realized well, i learned it on the stage so i think people will just learn through life and be open to learning like till today i open books and i learn till today i pay for online courses i mean i'm happy to learn just keep keep learning keep, i didn't i i i would i wasn't sure at the age of 18 that i'm you know i'll be i'll still be learning at when i was 30 plus but i'm still learning i'm happy to learn just keep just keep learning be open to it enjoy it don't just do it because someone on a webinar a few years back said that no just do it like just feel it and uh, continue doing it um i think uh, a lot of us on the panel here uh, listening oh sorry sorry i'm going to cut you again i did not know at the age of 18 that i should have multiple sources of income that's what everyone should have be it be it your salary be it your be it maybe your savings be it from your property be it mutual funds or be it stocks or be it just have multiple sources of income you know define your risk appetite before getting into any of them and uh, have have that old school thing when your parents say save money please save money but then wherever you're investing money investing your time which is i think sometimes more important than money uh just make sure it's multiple sources because you will only see those benefits down the decades i think this is something which i did not know at 18 i just thought oh okay just get into business and there's profit and oh there's salary and oh okay that's it so i think that that was something which i i would have told myself and people should, i think people read that nowadays it's it's uh, mentioned a lot and yeah and have a mentor i don't know have a mentor then i had i mean for me my biggest mentor is my i'm a parents but i think look for other mentors as well along with your parents depending how your relation with them is but yeah look at other uh, mentors as well let I me mean, learn learn speaking of learning and combining the practical experiences together uh, many of our students are getting ready to graduate and uh, they would love to know if you uh, are looking for an employee uh, and if you are how do how do they go about applying it or reaching out to your hr uh, applying with us is fairly simple like drop in drop in an email to careers@yogigroup.com it's as mm-hmm. simple as that and uh, what was the other part of the question sorry um, yeah just uh, how how do they go about uh, becoming an employee how do they become an employee okay they i mean after after the team filters the cvs and saying that this is this is somebody who we need and this is an uh, you know this is an opening we have and yeah i mean we just we filter that and then we have a round of interviews i mean there are a few things we we look for i mean i mean there, i mean i'll still i'll say it because i'm assuming it's not me i think all of our employers are looking for it is apart from your academic academic knowledge i think everyone knows there is this personality the we look into all kind of qualities be it most important for me is the drive like does that person have that fire inside or does that person only wants to get a job because that person needs to tell to speak about it in the in the fraternity of theirs that oh i got a job you know be the drive be, be the confidence body language there are multiple things so i think a few rounds of interviews where we where we go through all of that and we still make mistakes it can happen because trust me it's very easy to fake it you know like if you like we we call it fakery bakery so so people it's very easy to fake it so a lot of a lot of uh, employees try to do that they like they'll give they'll show the employers what they need to see but eventually then then do nothing so there are a lot of these uh, things we qualities we look into uh, look for and yeah and that's when we go we go ahead Okay, thank you so much for that. Uh, I am certain that you'll receive a few applications once we have students graduating uh, and, and uh, following the interest of your industry. We have a few questions on our Q and A section, but in the interest of time, uh, I'll just go through a couple of them. Uh, our first question is: What is the best process to prioritize the tasks? Like you have long to do list, however limited time. journal it like for me i'm still old school i still have a diary i put it down sometimes when i when i put the list down i kind of have the priority on it i put this is one this is two this is three i keep opening my from this is personally what i do 
So, I mean, I'm just going to say that because I, it, it works, works for me. Is I put it on the diary and these are the tasks to be done. What's important? And obviously, you, everyone's importance is defined differently. And uh, so, yeah, you, you define that and then that's when you keep going. I mean, if it's not done, you need to get back to it. Write it on a future date. Go back to it and follow up. Follow up. Communicate wherever it's needed. Communication is very, very important. People should not say that, oh, you know, communication is something which they sit back on. Mm-hmm. Follow up is important. And uh, yeah, that's how at least I get my task done. Like I just journal it, diary it. And, so, and a lot of times I actually go back. I try to open the diary in maybe November to see what did I do in July? What did I do in August? Just to like see, like I'm, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't get enough time to go through it. Just to like run through that what was my thinking then? And 50% of the time, I'm just laughing. I'm like, what was I thinking? <laughs> okay. Um, that's a really good tip. Uh, for the next question, we have, what are the best practices you ado- uh, adopt to keep your uh, team motivated? I think be a part of it. I think be a part of it is one of the biggest motivation you can give because if you keep telling your team that you know you're working for me that just demotivates and uh, doing a lot of research and brainstorm with them like be a part of the team it's not like listen report to me tomorrow at nine o'clock no, not happening so it's just you be a part of it and i think that automatically comes through be easy with them be very very fluid uh, wherever need be where Firmness is needed where it's needed. Example, if there is a deadline of filing VAT returns, you have to be firm. Your accountant or your team, that person can't mess around. So where you need to be firm, you need to be firm. If there's a deadline where the client says that you know, there is a handover date for a project, you need to hand over much before the project, or at least by the deadline. Those places you need to be firm. You can't go easy there. So yeah, I mean, just being with them, I think that's more important. Just after you, do, you don't stop at delegation. You just, just make sure you are you're communicating and you're with them. Okay. Um, so the next question that we have is uh, something along the same lines by Muhammad Sar- Sarmar. I need to know that how Mr. Pagarani took his first step to start his business and how he gathered his business team. Oh, so, okay. I mean, we have a short on time, but again, I'll try to make it as quick as possible. I, you... Papa was, Papa, I'm assuming they're asking about Papa, so I'm just going to say that. So Papa was a janitor at that time. He was working for Yamaha, Al Yusuf Motors. And during, during his evening leisure time, he used to sit on the corner of the buildings where, you know, the, the local Emiratis used to sit on the floor and just have their chai, I mean, have the tea or just chat. And through that, Papa realized that there is some local who wants to lease his unit. And there is, in another group he sat, he realized there's some local who wants to, who, who wants to he's looking for a unit. So he put two, two and two things together. He didn't, he didn't even know there is something called a broker. He did that for free for, for you know, a few times. And then the one person just gives him brokerage fees. But I was like, what are you trying to do? He said, hey, you just did a broker's job. I was looking for a unit. You found me a unit. And that's how that started. And then it was pure backward integration where he started with real estate, started with brokerage, from flats, it went to uh, apart, uh, from apartments, it went to offices, to factories, and to land. And then someone, and then my, my, my dad realized that after selling a land, we are looking for a contractor. But I was like, why don't I just construct myself? You know, so he, he got into, the, he got into the, the muck with engineers trying to see how things are. He, he was in projects for a few times before opening his own construction company. Then Embridge Contracting Company came on board. And then same thing, constructing buildings. And then again, backward integration, that why should I buy building materials when I can import it myself? Then we open a Yogi International Trading, and we, we import our own building material. Then few materials could be manufactured. And Papa said, why should I give it to a subcontractor? Why don't I open my own factory? And you know, again, backward integration. I think backward integration is what he kept doing. And we are also trying to do our level best in the same thing. So I think backward integration is the key. I'm sure they, they are, the students are learning it through the uni, what it means. And uh, that's, how, that's how it worked out for Papa and it worked out beautifully. So okay. I, I answer this question. Thank yep. you. Uh, the, uh, I'm certain you have. Uh, another question that we have is any mental health tips that you apply on yourself? Mental health tips? Yeah. Uh, you know, going, given you have the regular schedule that you have uh, and the challenges that you come across, 
Uh, is there anything that you do to keep your mental health up and running? For me, honestly, my my workouts keep me very sane. Mm-hmm. My workouts keep me sane. For me, it's a release. Like you know, everyone should have their own kind of release. That's my release. I I'm 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 very regular with my prayers. My prayers are like prayers and workout are like maybe a shower and sleep for somebody. Like if I don't pray and if I don't work out, I. I be- I become inhuman I become like an alien but I I I don't my I become cranky I I mean I just I I don't respond well so that's what actually keeps me sane and uh, yeah I mean I I try my level best to minimum to read minimum 30 40 minutes a day if mm-hmm. I can read more I will read more when I don't read I do feel like shit but then I'm like okay you know I'll catch up because some days you just don't get the time to read you got to even after removing time it's still not happening and then I'm confused like should I read or should I sleep make us just sleep more or less healthy and uh, so yeah i just these few things i think these few things for me it works i mean i think you just take care of your health i think that mentally mentally uh, stabilizes everything for me it could okay. be it could be a sport like for my brother's cricket so it's it's different thing for my wife is yoga for for everyone else it's, it's different things for different people so whatever whatever floats your boat So I think I wouldn't be wrong if I said the food for your soul is the prayers and the workouts and that keeps you to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. Um we have few more questions but uh to be respectful to everyone's time I will have to cut them short. Um uh, but uh, I kept talking. No, no. Uh whatever information you gave us gave away was something that was really insightful and really helpful and um you know like you said learning involves in an everyday uh, process you know it's, it's learning should never stop and hearing from you and understanding the kind of challenges you have gone through and understanding how you managed to sail through the boat uh, with humility and teamwork and the togetherness with your team is certainly a lesson for me as well um so i hope that everyone who's present here and have been a part of this session have taken away a great deal of learning and uh, thank you so much mr ratanamu for joining us for giving us your time for walking us through uh, answering all the questions that were put together by the students uh, we absolutely appreciate it thank you very much and uh, last but not the least uh, i'd like to extend my thanks to everyone all the participants who are here students thank you uh, thank you for sharing your questions and i hope uh, you found the in uh, the session just as information informative So on that note I wish everyone a great rest of the day uh, thank you once again thank you and I, I want to thank you as well you curtain all I mean your entire team shweta and uh, thank you for the attendees who are, who are here sorry if i said something which sounded wrong for whatever cultural or personal reason that was there was there was no intentions for that and you know what if anyone has more questions feel free we are we are socially very available <laughs> be it my company be it any of the companies we are active on social media if someone needs to i'm not trying to pitch here my on my own account but if someone wants to like drop me a question and ask me i'm i mean i'm a public account you can drop me a dm and i'll i'll answer back in whatever best way i can and yeah thanks thanks so thanks a lot and i'm looking forward to have to have a few curtain like smart brains and yogi group very very soon and you guys are doing a fabulous job like thank you god bless and congratulations to all of you thank you thank you so much um students if you're willing to find out more about the yogi group you can always drop an email to us at marketing or at uh, life at curtain and we will uh, give you the details or you can uh, absolutely look them up on uh, uh, on the internet as well uh, yogigroup.com and um, i hope it will be beneficial for everyone uh, by the end of it thank you so much once again and uh, wishing everyone a great rest of the day Have a great weekend guys have fun yes have a great weekend too <laughs> thank you for that thank you thanks